If a bear market is approaching, investors should have the correct investment strategy in place to profit. If an investor does not know what that strategy is, they may find themselves losing money in the coming months. In order for you to stay successful in bear markets, you need to be well spread out. Keep your funds on different assets and with different terms, so that if one job falls through, the other income stream will take care of itself. Investors tend to pull investments out during a downturn because they don't want to lose money. But there are still ways to benefit from a bear market and make money, such as shorting stocks during a market crash when the price is at its bottom. You must keep a conscious effort towards confidence and maintain a reasonable degree of financial safeguard when you invest. Luckily for you, Fortune Fast Laner, we have prepared a list of 8 ways for you to make money in a bear market. Remember that while the first step is completing any of these amazing courses, the second and possibly more important step is taking action, even if it is imperfect action. But before we talk about the 8 ways to make money, let us first talk about what bear market is. Whenever the stocks in the market go down by 20% or more on average, they often correspond to a bear market. The S&P 500 is an index that operates over various sectors of the economy and goes down during periods where there are general economic decreases like war or natural disaster. Commodities are not immune to a traditional bear market either. As long as the prices have fallen by 20% or more for an extended period of time, they can be considered to be in a bear market. Despite bear markets being typically bad for the stock market, there are still opportunities for investors who use beneficial strategies. In other words, a bear market is a term used to describe when the market value of a financial asset drops. These down markets are unavoidable and they tend to only last for a short period of time, especially compared with the upward bull markets, where the market gains value over an extended period of time. Bear markets can even be good opportunities for investors. So, when do you invest? As defined by the S&P 500, a bear market is when a broad index falls by 20% or more from its recent high. There can be bear markets for the whole market, such as Dow Jones Industrial Average as well as individual stocks. For instance, on June 13, 2022, the S&P 500 hit bear market territory. It has declined 20% from a high for the year. While 20% is typically the shortest and longest bear market, it typically isn't completed in one single relief rally. Eventually, investors find stocks that are priced attractively and so buy them, officially ending the bear market. During bear markets, investors are often pessimistic and there is lower confidence in the market. Investors tend to continue selling, which leads to decreased prices. People may be skeptical about companies, but the overall market will not see the same sentiment. However, when sentiment against companies turns negative, all stocks in that category tend to perform poorly. What causes a bear market, and how long do they last? A bear market often occurs just before or after a recession, but not always. Investors look to key economic measures such as employment and wage growth, inflation, and interest rates to judge when the economy is slowing down. When investors see that the economy is slowing down, they expect corporate profits to decline. When this happens, investors sell stocks, causing the market to dip even lower. A bear market means tougher economic times and more unemployment. Bear markets are proven to be shorter and less severe, with a loss of 33% on average, but with bull market gains averaging 159%. Typically, bear markets last 363 days before ending, while bull markets last an average of 1,742 days. March 11, 2020 is known as the coronavirus bear market when it began and would reach a bull market phase just a few weeks later. But the full impacts of this downturn on society are still unknown. Now, here are 8 ways to make money in a bear market as an investor. Number 1. Short Selling Short selling is a speculative strategy used by experienced investors in order to get a better return. It takes place when a particular stock is sold on the market, but with the hope that the price will decrease in the future. 
If the price drops, you can buy stocks you borrowed at a lower cost in order to cover the short position and profit. If you borrowed stock XYZ at $40 a share and the price of stock went down to $30, because you closed out your short position for $10 per share, your total profit would be in the positive. This provides a potential unlimited risk of loss in case that an asset has reached its peak price. Number 2. Buying High Yield Dividend Stocks In a falling stock market, dividends tend to remain relatively stable because companies are still earning money and stocks have become more affordable. A good way to find these companies is by searching for dividend stocks. If the company has a steady income and pays out dividends, the stock is an opportunity for those seeking profit. Given that dividends are still being paid, stocks with dividends provide upside potential. Number 3. Put Options A put contract becomes more valuable when the stock is low. In a bear market, the holder of a put contract has the right to sell the stock, but not the obligation to do so. Strike price is a predetermined price that gives buyers of puts the right to sell or short sell a particular stock. A put option becomes more valuable when the underlying stock keeps falling below the strike price. When the stock falls beyond the strike price, you can sell it at a higher strike price or decide to sell your put option. Bear in mind that a put option differs from a call option, which we're about to explain. However, just like short selling, a put option decreases in value if the price of the underlying stock increases. Number 4. Buying Call Option Call options give the holder a guarantee that an individual stock will increase in value within a specific period of time. Buying call options is related to market activity, not investing activity. Let's remember that call options are secondary investments and these can expire if you're not careful. The great thing about buying a call option is that while it can cost you a lot of money to buy the underlying stock, it tends to be cheaper than the typical stock at the bottom of the market. Number 5. Writing Covered Calls This means that if you issue a covered call, which is when you sell your stock to someone else who has already purchased that call option from the broker. With a covered call, the leverage of purchasing stocks remains with a buyer who will receive income if it increases in value. For investors facing a bear market, selling shares for more than their purchase price is an effective way to make more money. The buyer plans to get paid if the market rebounds, but if it does not, the investor will still receive their premium option. A covered call is when the rider buys an out of the money, at the money, or in the money option. If the holder decides not to use their call, you will be covered and receive the premium that was paid for that option trade. Number 6. Short ETFs Generic ETFs known to generate returns when their underlying is decreasing in price. Inverse ETFs are a type of generic ETF that invests in a stock index and lift the index in value when the stocks go down. ETFs are based on short investments in companies and their sales, which means if their share value goes down, the sale of these stocks returns profits. This inverse relationship is appropriate for investors who want to hedge against a market downturn in certain sectors. ETFs are also a good way to diversify into various sectors with one investment. These leverage exchange-traded funds are a way to invest in stocks during bear markets without the risk of shorting stocks. These ETFs are not considered long-term investments, but they provide an alternative to short selling as they limit your losses to the amount you invest. Number 7. Buy Good Stocks In a bear market, the value of both good stocks and bad stocks tend to go down. However, with proper management and by purchasing at low prices, good stocks can recover and go back to growing during the duration of the bear market while bad stocks stay down until the bear market ends. You should make sure to do your homework and research a company before you go ahead with investing in their stocks. It is important that you know how the company's products or services work, as well as how well they run. Certain bond ratings may indicate if the company is a safe investment or not. A company's credit rating ranges from AAA, AA, and A, marking it as a safe investment. Companies marked with BBB and below are risky investments. Usually, the bear market is hard for investors to navigate. 
but understanding the market will allow individual investors to make more informed decisions. Number 8. Acquire Defensive Stocks An easy way to protect your investment is by acquiring defensive stocks. These are stocks of companies whose products will always be in demand, regardless of the economy and with these companies, you know that your food and beverage manufacturer is a good one to invest in. Stocks from companies that manufacture items like electronics, autos, and machines tend to do well in an economy booming. A cyclical stock refers to an economy that creates ads to the economy. In an economic downturn, investors will often move their money to companies that sell products or services that people still want. This can keep them protected even as they make money in a down market. Now, let us give you some useful tips in investing in a bear market. Number 1. Don't sell off During a bear market, investors often think about selling off stocks to minimize losses. However, that approach is not the millionaire mindset. Selling when you need more cash to invest instead. Mark Doss, Regional Chief Investment Officer for Wells Fargo Private Bank in San Diego, states that investors need to be able to hold on to their investments during an economic downturn or bear market. Some investors sell during a downturn and do not participate in the recovery phase. Doss suggests that keeping cash on hand is important to avoid a sell-off during times where the economic outlook is uncertain. Number 2. Think Big, Act Small when the market is in a slump, investing is even more important. During these times, working toward your objective and staying strategic with what you do will help make sure that your portfolio stays intact. Clark Kendall, CEO of Kendall Capital in Rockville, Maryland, says that millionaire investors think forward 5 to 10 years from now. They also consider things like the state of the economy, what consumers will be spending money on, and what interest rates might be in the near future. From there, they take action to shape their short-term decisions. They know that any decision can be a wrong decision, but that series of small decisions will typically outperform just one make-or-break large decision. Kendall says this philosophy is associated with the idea of decisive risk and he explains that it's about taking a series of small steps that pay off over time. The lesson here is that you should avoid making all-in buy or sell moves since the odds of this strategy paying off tend to be low. Number 3. Know what you own Knowing what you own is useful to invest wisely at any time. One way to do that is to think about the reason you bought an item. And it's this concept in which understanding what you bought is attributed to Gerald Loeb, partner of brokerage firm EF Hutton & Company. CJ Broth of Dallas-based Capital Ideas says, We believe that Solomon was the first true growth stock investor because he always analyzed the financials of any company he bought. Loeb then singled out a single reason for owning the stock and called it the ruling reason for his ownership. Loeb has also been known to sell the stock when the reason why it was bought becomes invalid, which is the best way people are able to make a profit without rationalizing. Loeb has had the mindset of forecasting what can become a losing investment, then selling it quickly so that he doesn't overthink his money and not make enough for what he invested in. He has been able to fully sell out his investments when their major reason for buying still remains true. Number 4. Automate your investments First, it helps you to consistently tap into the power of modern investing techniques like dollar cost averaging and compounding interest. Second, it helps you avoid the mistakes that occur by trying to try and time the market. Time spent in the market is more important than timing the market, says Tim Quillen, a chartered financial analyst and partner at Aptus Financial in Little Rock, Arkansas. When investors take their money out of the market, they have to be right when they sell their stocks and when they invest in the market again. Number 5. Keep bear markets in perspective Don't stick your head in the sand about bear markets. Periodically, it will pass. By being realistic and aware of a bear market and taking precautionary measures, you can mitigate risk and reach your specific investment goals. Campman says millionaires generally are in a better position to see the long-term effects of bear markets because they have more experience in investing. 
enabling them to see downturns as opportunities for asset purchases, which can lead to solid returns at a later point. If you follow the same money-making strategies as a millionaire, you can take the same approach and invest at entry points rather than to look for an exit. To end this, it can be a good time to invest in stocks during a bear market. The best way is to invest in ETFs and real estate, which are sectors that tend to remain strong during a bear market. However, for long-term investors, a bear market shouldn't cause you too much stress and worry. If your investment strategy is sound, you shouldn't lose money in a bear market. That's it for this video, Fortune Fastlaner. Remember to subscribe to our channel and if you feel like we've delivered value, please share this video with one person. That's right, just one person as a token of your appreciation for the hard work we put into making content that educates and helps you in your mission of building your own fortune. Remember, you can watch video after video, but it isn't until you actually take action that you'll start to see results. See you soon!